I'm with Brian Claypool of Barco and he's in charge of their sound technology and we're talking about Oro Max today mm -hmm. and that's a new announcement from Barco because um, pretty much the Oro technology is evolving and in, in a very interesting way because they're really focusing on the standards and I'll let, I'll let Brian take us uh, on from there because um, I just want to put forward that I think it's very good that you know we've had the DCI's uh, comment on standards, NATO's comment on standards, and Barco's really going down that road to ensure that those standards are compatible, that we are all on the same page, and they're working on solutions to take advantage of that and maximize the quality, and well, uh, using a standard makes it far easier for the studios to uh, you know, cost-effectively bring immersive audio to all of us in cinema. So can you comment on, you know, on your story on that, please, Brian? Yeah, certainly. So uh, as you're aware, back in 2011, we did Red, Red Tails. Yes. And, and our approach at that time was to come up with an idea that allowed easy distribution compatibility for formats, to be able to heighten the experience of audio in the marketplace and get it to be easy for exhibitors to install. That's so right. as a result today, we have 330 screens, we've done about 120 titles, but it is difficult for the content creators to be able to spend the maximum amount of time that they want to create immersive sound because of all the different problems in creating the different formats, right? The 5.1 is still the money maker, right? So they have to make sure that the movie sounds good, but wouldn't it be nice if there was a way to be able to spend the maximum amount of time that they have in their schedules to create one immersive mix that works anywhere you put it? That's right. So Oromax is our answer for that call for standards and specifications that allow for that content created in that manner. So back in September of last year, we purchased the assets from Iosono. Now, Iosona started playing around with object-based audio as early as 2007, and some of you may have gone to the demos where, where Iosona did full wave field synthesis and did wavefront acoustics and things of that okay. nature. But at the core, it's still object-based rendering. So we've taken that technology and complemented it to what we do with oral technologies and our three layers of sound and how we get the most natural representation of audio in the auditoriums, and we've created Oral Max. Right? So the demos that we're doing here at CinemaCon shows just that. It shows a standardized workflow approach to immersive sound using the elements of Oro, but also the elements of objects to be able to create certain definitions in how you move objects around in space. So once SMPTE is complete with their work, you'll have that one distribution master that the studios have created for immersive sound. And when it hits our theaters, we'll provide an upgrade that allows object-based rendering technology to hit the oral speaker layout. And okay. that's Oro Max. That's right. So that's now on that story. Um, I was at the Cinema Summit last week at NAB and there was quite a lot of talk that you CSS, uh, 25 CSS, which is the Simply Committee working on this standard. And there was a mixer on the stage too. Uh, there was Brian Vesser from Sony Pictures, who's chair of that committee. And then there was um, Will Files. Will Files, answer. that's yeah. right. And he made a, a, an interesting comment that he he does not think, or in his opinion, that unless the mixer or the producer, the, you know, the intent of that mixer can hear it in the speaker configurations which it's going out to the field in, um, then he doesn't really think that that will, will fly with the producer, or it won't align with producer intent, right? Now, uh, can you comment on that? Like, Oromax comes out with certain speaker configurations like the, I think um, there's another another standard which says they've got variable speaker configurations what's your opinion on that story well we're, look we work with creatives quite a bit and we're we hear the message of wanting to stick to the artistic intent of That's the right. mixers and the producers That's right. very clearly yes uh, however I think there are ways to be able to ensure that there are certain baseline performance requirements met of how a film is mixed and how it's expected to play back that still allows a certain degree of flexibility in how you configure your auditoriums but not to the point where you can make it uh, you can't play 5.1 in stereo without creating some kind of compromise right? right there's going to be similar compromises in immersive sound but there will be standards that 
uh, that will allow things to be able to play that represent the artistic intent. Uh, there are subjects such as uh, zones and speaker groups, definitions of things like that, that should still be able to allow that artistic intent to be carried faithfully on the different systems that are allowed or are capable of playing the standardized bitstream once it's fully defined. I think we can arrive at that, but it will take people from the mixing perspective, it will take people from the technology perspective, um, and there also has to be a, an awareness of the requirements of exhibition that if we really want to get the public to know and get familiar with the concept of immersive sound, it's got to be scalable and it's got to be deployable by exhibition. They have to be able to afford it to put it down in a wide way. Absolutely, and that's where the, the, I think this, the, the point comes across. Like I know some, um, I, I service quite a few smaller independent cinemas in the country, Victoria, and the object of you know, the, the, the having to upgrade their cinemas to immersive sound, some of them don't have their rooms, they're old buildings, they may be nationally trusted so you can't touch them. Um, going in there and punching holes and everything, putting speakers everywhere, just ain't on. Yeah. So there, there has to be some flexibility there and this is where we're getting some flexibility and constraints going on. It is, it's an inter I actually find it quite interesting mm -hmm. uh, and I know that it's been worked on and over the next six months I know that uh, the industry is going to do quite a lot of tests and the, all the, the boffins and the SMPTE community, et cetera, and a lot of the studios are all going to be looking at this very deeply and will come up with some sort of solution, compromise or something. But it'll come, I think, now that the bitstream is, well, the metadata in the bitstream, if we're getting very technical, of the CSS uh, working group has been set. Uh, how we put that into a bit streams being worked on right now, but there's some fast tracking of that. And after that, you know, it's very possible by NAB next year that we may, maybe, may have a, uh, a standard basically near ratif ratification. So, hope cross fingers that that's the case because that will bring immersive audio to a wider audience faster once we know where we're going because the road is set ahead. So keep that in mind. And so this is an interesting uh, topic of the show. Um, I think laser was the, the, the uh, no, the pixel big news. Yes. Yeah, that's the, laser is the big news of this year, but audio is always going to be there. But yes, thank you, Brian. Uh, thank you very much again. And of that's course. Brian Papel from Barco and James Gardner at CinemaCon 2015. Bye for now.